Hello, and welcome to the Finding Wisdom show. My name is Linda Singh, and on today's show, we're going to talk about, we're going to explore Freemasonry. Today, I have with me a very special guest by the name of Clifford Jacobs, who is actually a 33rd degree Mason. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Cliff. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. I'd like to know, can you tell us about the history of Freemasonry? Well, um, in a nutshell, because that, that can be quite an extensive um, conversation. But basically, Freemasonry is the oldest and largest fraternity in the world. Um, we have a document that speaks of Freemasonry. Well, the document dates from the 13th century. And it actually, in the document, talks about Freemasonry in the time of King Athelstan, who dates from like 980 uh, AD. Um, the official Grand Lodge of England was formed in 1717, so we're a few hundred years old, you know, for sure. And um, you can find um, Freemasons in virtually every country of the world, um, the exception being uh, communist countries where Freemasonry is not um, allowed and suppressed. Okay. Um, but it is the oldest and, and largest um, fraternal organization in the world. It's the first fraternity. All other fraternities, college fraternities, and associations are just variations of what Freemasonry was in the beginning. Uh, who was uh, um, the founder of this organization? Well, um, it's, you, you can't pinpoint it to one individual, but um, Freemasonry had its origins in the building guilds of the Middle Ages. Um, you had stonecutters and other workers who um, were responsible for erecting the cathedrals and castles. And you have to realize that at that time, um, information and the knowledge of how to construct um, a castle or cathedral wasn't something that you learned in school. Just like, for example, uh, television. There was a time where you couldn't go to college and learn about TV and filmmaking because it wasn't being taught. So knowledge of the builder's trade was passed down from mouth to ear, um, sometimes from father to son. Um, when you join uh, a, what they call a lodge, or it was sort of like being in the union, uh, sort of like being a construction worker today. And when you first entered, you were known as an entered apprentice, which is equivalent to the first degree. And as you continue to learn, you advance becoming next a fellow craft, which is equivalent to the second degree. And then you became a master mason, which is equivalent to being uh, a third degree. And once you were given the secrets of the builder's trade, you could then travel to other countries and find work. Um, that's why there were certain modes of recognition, secret handshakes or secret signs. So if you were traveling from France to, um, you know, to Germany to work on a building, you could prove yourself to be a master mason by giving them certain signs and they would hire you to, to work. So it really came out of the building uh, trades in the Middle Ages. In later on, in say about the 18th century, Freemasonry went from what we call operative, actual stone cutters, to being what we call speculative. And they started to admit um, statesmen, um, artists, um, people of learning into the craft. So now you have um, individuals like Voltaire, uh, Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn, um, Goethe, a German author, who all became Freemasons. And um, so it became more of an intellectual pursuit. And the instruments that the builders used to use, like the square and the compasses, um, became symbols of morality, to teach lessons of morality. And so Freemasonry moved from being an organization of actual stone cutters to become a philosophical uh, organization and um, that tries to inculcate principles of morality and ethics in its members. Okay. What would you say is the purpose of this organization? What are the goals that they try to achieve? We, we, we say primarily that our, um, our primary goal is to take uh, good men and make them better. Um, of course, we have charities where we contribute to those who are less fortunate than we are, but we don't 
you know, take um, those individuals and, and try to make them over. We like to start out with good men, and we take good men and try to make them even better so that they can be contributing members of society, so that they can go out into their communities and, um, and, and do good, basically. Um, we, again, give um, a lot of money to charity, but also you can find in Freemasonry the tools for your own spiritual progress. Um, it can be a pathway to enlightenment if you use the, the tools and the symbols um, consciously and creatively. Um, it can bring about a change in your own individual life. Um, Freemasonry, let me say straight out, is not a religion. A lot of people think that it is a religion. Mm -hmm. It is not a religion. Um, there is no plan for salvation. There is no you know, sacrament, no mass. It's a fraternity, first and foremost. It's a fraternal organization. Members can be of any faith. You can be Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu. Um, you can be of any faith and be a Mason. We don't dictate who you should pray to. Um, the only thing you can't be is an atheist. So because we have this requirement, people tend to think that we're, we're, we are a religion, but we're not. We're a fraternity. But as a fraternity, we have tools that can actually help you um, learn more about yourself and understand some of the mysteries of life, so to speak. So in other words, um, you can be, say, Hindu, and practice Hinduism while you are a Freemason? Absolutely, okay. because there's no, there's no conflict there. Okay. Uh, I must admit that s there are some religions that have a problem with Freemasonry, mm -hmm. but Freemasonry doesn't have a problem with any religion. So there are some religions where they would prefer that their members not join the Masons for one reason or another. Um, but for us, we, we don't have a problem because we we accept um, individuals from all spiritual paths. Okay, because sometimes other religions um, see Freemasonry as um, maybe satanic, maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's affiliated with negative, um, sure. um, negative uh, thoughts on uh, sat satism and um, well, yeah, I mean, uh, ungodly. It, um, <laughs> So the people, world, new world order. Right. What do you think about that? I mean, um, you know, one one of the one of the um, the architects of Freemasonry um, uh, in the 1800s was an individual named Albert Pike, who was actually a Southern general, and he wrote a major book called Morals and Dogma, which is the so-called Bible.